If you practice being angry, you're going to always be angry. You'll get good at it. If you practice being happy, you'll be happy and you'll be good at it. If you practice impromptu speaking, you'll get good at impromptu speaking. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Stick around. Hi there, I'm Christine Harper. And I'm Ernie Davis. And we're, and we're from, from Powerhouse, Powerhouse Motivations. Motivations. And one day we're going to say that at the exact same time. Christine, we got it that time. That time it was perfect. We're good. <laughs> so as I said in the opening, I believe in practice. And I think practice gets you where you want to be. Have you ever gone to an event and they call on you, ask you to come up front and say a few words about a particular topic? Well, in between the time that they call your name and you get to the front, the hands get sweaty, you get nervous, you wonder, is my hair right? Is my dress too tight? And then you just get up there and do something. Now, everybody has their own approach to this, but Ernie, you told me yesterday that you had an interesting technique that you all used in the Navy. I, I want you to share that with our friends. Oh yeah, it's called the hip pocket presentation. You know, I love it, the hip pocket presentation. Actually, I'm down here, I'm here right now in Gulfport, Mississippi, in the home of the Naval Construction Force, the home of the hip pocket presentation. About three miles north of here is where I learned this technique called the hip pocket presentation. It's exactly how it sounds. What you do is you whip out a piece of paper, kind of like I have here, you mm -hmm. write out a, pre a, a speech, three points, keep it simple. Basic topic, three points, you put it on that, that thing right there. Now I know some guys, Christine, they would write out an entire five to six minute speech. They would write the entire five to six minute speech out and they would keep it in their hip pocket. They'd fold it up into small squares, put it in their pocket and they would carry this thing around the world with them. And anytime they were asked to give a presentation, hey, without fear, they would throw that, whip that thing out of their pocket, put it on a podium, and they'd walk around as if they weren't looking at the paper, but they'd have their main topic. They'd have their points laid out. And they would give that speech. Can you imagine how professional you look when somebody says, hey, can you give a few words? You jump up anxiously, run to the front, because you know you got that hip pocket speech in your pocket, and you go for it. Awesome stuff. You know, it always comes out, it always comes out amazingly well. But you know, it takes a lot of practice to do that. You know, luckily, a few miles away from here, I, I went through a, a, an initiation for a fraternity, and this was part of the, the, the initiation. They were preparing us to speak to leaders of countries around the world, guys like the President of the United States, uh, leaders at the United States Pentagon, and so they, they made sure that we got it down perfectly. We had great coaches and mentors in that program. You know, so if you want, if you want to get good at that, you, you're going to have to think about, hey, who, who's going to help me with this? Who can give me some insight? There's another type of impromptu speech, mm -hmm. and it's called segue speech. Mm -hmm. The segue speech is that moment of speaking where you have to pivot or transition from topic A to topic B. It mm -hmm. may not be particularly smooth if you don't think about it in advance because... Mm -hmm. You have to pick up on what you heard, what you heard was just discussed, mm -hmm. and then segue or lean into your own topic and oh, make wow. it appear. You, know, you, just, you just reminded me of one of my mentors, a guy by the name of Herman Raybon. He, he was a pro with this. He was a pro. I watched him do this, and often I would, I would get invites to speak up at the, uh, at the United States Pentagon, and there would be Mr. Raybon. He would be speaking after one of these senior secretaries, all a very professional speaker, the, the senior secretary of the military. And then he called Mr. Raybon up. Mr. Raybon, unknowingly, impromptu, it was, he would, he, you could see the, the shock and awe on his face that he wasn't prepared. Or was he just playing it off? He'd walk up to the front, pull out a note, put the note down, and he'd go for it. He delivered an awesome speech or presentation. And it just so happens that what he was really doing, it took me a while to really look at this, and I actually had a chance to study him when I was writing the book. But what he was really doing is he was segueing from the speaker who spoke before him. He gave a topic mm -hmm. which was loosely based upon that. And then he kind of transitioned and opened the door to the next speaker, to the next subject matter. Okay. That was awesome. 
you know, I asked him about it one time and I looked at him and he reminded me of another another guy that I worked with for a time, a guy by the name of Mr. Douglas. And Mr. Douglas would always say, Ernie, sometimes you just got to BS it as if you know what you're doing. He said, you got to BS it. I said, I like to say, I call it fake it till you make it, Mr. Douglas. He said, no, it's just BS it. Get up there and act like you know what you're doing. Hey, that takes nerves of steel, though. Nerves of steel and good coaching. I had a situation where I was asked to speak, uh, to teach meditation to children. Oh, wow. And so I thought about it. And I also thought about something that I was more comfortable with, something yeah. that I had prepared, which mm -hmm. was a story, a, a child's story, about a boy that didn't have shoes. Mm. And you might say, how shoes. the heck did that make that bridge happen? Okay. Well, we talked about the little boy that didn't have shoes, and then I engaged the children to think about what would their thoughts be or how would they want to contribute, not necessarily financially, but how would their thinking contribute to the situation of the little boy that had no shoes. Mm -hmm. And in that discussion, I asked them to just be still. Let's be still for one minute and all think about what we would do or how we could help, how we could pray for this little boy that had no shoes. Hold up, Christine. Let me see how, let me see if I understand how you did that. Because it sounds like you really <laughs> set this up really well. You came up with a story that filled a chunk of time. And then you asked the kids to think, which filled up some more time. And then it sounds like, what'd you do after that? That's how we close it out because it's in the stillness that uh -huh. I thought was the level that a young child could handle when oh. you talk about meditation. Yeah. So, so that's you, what we did. You just kind of put some things together and you just made it work. You know, Christine, if I had to, if I had to summarize this up, if I had to summarize these points up, I would say, you know, if you really want to get good at impromptu speaking, your first option is always, always to be always ready. Prepare that impromptu, that pocket speech. Put that hip pocket speech in your back pocket. Carry it along with you in, in your wallet, in your purse. But, hey, sometimes you're not going to have it. And so, hey, sometimes you're going to be asked to speak. But you may have to do what Mr. Douglas said. He hey, you jump up there. And he did something like what you said. He said, you, if they give you like five minutes, you think about what you want to speak about for about a minute or so. And he says, he, he always, he, Mr. Douglas says he always liked to give them some type of an exercise to do with the, with the audience, you know, like clapping their hands, or he likes to do a breathing exercise. And he says, Ernie, I've learned that if I do that, it, it takes away a few minutes of my time. And then I do something that's interactive with him. And then I tell him a little story, kind of like you did. I tell him a little story. And he says, I always leave him with something to think about. And so, Christine, what you just said really reminds me of what Mr. Douglas does. You know, that, that's pretty awesome. You said something, or we both said it, you have to listen. And a lot of people, first of all, a lot of people think, oh, I just know how to speak. I know how to breathe. I know how to project my voice. Mm -hmm. but, but speaking, there's a part of speaking that is listening and yeah. connecting with your audience and hearing what it is they want to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a practice. That's something you have to practice everywhere you go. So today, that's your assignment. Every place you go today, listen mm -hmm. to what others are trying to share with you. And it will help you be able to give an impromptu but appropriate response. Mm, that's good. You know what? You just reminded me of, you just reminded me of something that we cover in the coaching program from the book. 11 Steps to Powerful Presentations of Public Speaking. I wish I had a copy. I'd show it up for everybody. Oh, I have a copy. You you know, a copy. I always have my copy right here. Awesome. <laughs> 11 Steps to Powerful Presentations in Public Speaking. Awesome book. And so we, all, we always go through that, that book in the coaching program. And on page 124, I, I'm amazed that I can remember this. I'm amazed that I can remember this today. You know, it's four tips on page 124. And if I remember correctly, Christine, you're correct. You got the book. But the first step is always... You know, because you're not going to be able to all, you're not going to always be ready. You're not always going to have that impromptu speech written in your pocket. You're not always going to have your favorite purse, you know, and you're not always going to want to get up there and just BS it like Mr. Douglas says, because, hey, this is your life. This is your job. Mr. Douglas is a fun guy. He's, he, we have a lot of fun together, but you're not going to want to just jump up and fake it till you make it, you know, and practice makes perfect. But yeah, what are you practicing? And so page 124, here's those four, those four tips we give out. The first one is just like Christine just said, you have to listen. When you mm -hmm. get that request to come up there and speak, 
you get that request, you know, to come up there and speak. You have to think about where you're at. And you have to listen to the request. Listen to the question that was asked. Think about the theme of the meeting. So the first tip was listen to the question. The second tip is always pause strategically and breathe. Because when you first get that request, your heart's going to be beating. It's going to be racing. It's going to be going fast as if you were running a triathlon. You're walking to the front, walking the green mile. And what I always say is, listen, go up there. Walk up there with confidence. Don't be afraid to be quiet. Be silent, like Christine likes to say. Look out over the audience. I do it all the time. I look out over the audience from left to right. And you see, the audience, they just think that I'm looking out left to right. What I'm really doing is I'm pausing strategically. I'm getting my breathing under control. That's the second tip. And then the third tip is it, 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 it's, it, it's to provide an enthusiastic, direct, and focused response. It kind of comes from that saying that we shared with them last week, Christine. And if you guys didn't see the, the video from last week, go back and watch that video from last week, that, that tip from my Angelo. Because people, they're not going to remember everything that you said. They won't remember everything that you did. They're not going to remember that you walked up there and you looked out to the left and to the right, and you were quiet for like 20 seconds. But if Maya Angelou is correct, and I know she is, they're going to remember how you feel. So make sure you speak to them, give them something from the heart, give a good answer. And then the fourth tip, if I'm correct, Ms. Harper, if I'm correct, page 124, it's going to be conclude with a light yeah. summary and a call to action. You see, yes. that's the four tips. That's what you practice makes perfect. You want to get perfect? Work with a coach or somebody. Practice those four tips, right? Listen to the question. Pause and breathe strategically. Provide an enthusiastic response, thinking about Miss Maya Angelou. They're going to remember how you make them, make them feel. Make them feel good. And number four, a light summary and a call to action. Just like I just did right there with those four tips. That's awesome the way that works out. You see, practice makes perfect. Yes, it does. And these are the things that we do at Powerhouse Motivations with the aspiring speakers mastermind groups. So if you're interested in that, make sure to press like. Yeah. Send us an email and we will get back to you with the details press like. on how. Yeah. Yes. You got to get on there. Matter of fact, there's a link right there that says learn more. That link will take you to the aspiring speakers page and okay. and i think the last course filled up the one that we're doing right now it's full but i know for a fact if you click that link right now matter of fact you can go ahead and check it check it right now click that link and you're going to find on that page it says enroll in the what is that thing called christine harper the wait list <laughs> enroll in the wait list yes. enroll that wait list and miss christine harper or myself will contact you directly to let you know when the next class is coming that's right because in those groups, we help you prepare, practice, evaluate, and then improve. And yeah. that's the only way you're going to get better. Practice makes perfect. Practice your own practice there. speaking, and you will be good at impromptu speaking. So we thank you for being with us today. I, I learned something, and I think you probably did too. And so uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Christine. Have an awesome day, everybody.